This is KGW News at 11. Well, I don't want to arm my employees or anything, you know. So I, I don't know what can be done except the city's just got to get a grip on what's going on here. And give us a hand. A Portland business owner says they've been robbed dozens of times over the last few years. The latest attempt is caught on camera. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm John Adams. Ashley Grahams has been going over that surveillance video and the gunman robbed the cannabis shop. Ashley. Yeah, John, it was a brazen armed robbery in the Buckman neighborhood, and the owner says it was actually a customer that fought off the thief. Take a look. Two employees and a customer robbed at gunpoint inside a cannabis shop on Friday night. I don't know if there's anything we can do to stop it because they're, they're pretty bold to come in here with customers in here with a gun in their hand. Laszlo Baggy is the owner. He runs five shops, including Eden Cannabis on Southeast 12th Avenue. We close at 9 o'clock. So pretty close to that closing time. You can see the suspect enter the store while a customer is talking with two employees. The manager of Eden Cannabis walked us through what happened next. So you see the customer trying to tell them to leave, basically. And the employees are slowly moving toward a safe room as the two men fight. He jumped the counter. Staff try to lock the door and the customer refuses to back down. And that's when the customer was throwing tip jars at him. But the tip jar wasn't enough. The customer then grabs a chair, seemingly unafraid of the man with a gun. And that guy, he was amazing. Throwing anything he can at the masked gunman before he's hit in the head with a pistol. I don't know what can be done, except the city's just got to get a grip on what's going on here. And give us a hand. Portland police say the suspect ran and no one has been arrested. Since COVID, we've had 35 different break-ins or armed robberies. Baggy says other cannabis stores have similar problems. I have another friend who has four or five shops and he experiences the same thing. Thankfully, in this instance, no one was severely hurt. That's what worries Baggy the most. It sets more of them endangering or scaring the employees that are working here. That's, that's the toughest part is the people that work here. So glad everyone was able to walk away. No one seriously hurt, but the owner says he needs help. He needs police to put a stop to these dangerous robberies. And actually that owner mentioned this being a repeat issue there, and we know police were called to a different cannabis store in Southeast Portland as well today. Yeah, that's right, John. Just before four this afternoon, police were called to Floyd's Fine Cannabis on Southeast 28th Avenue after someone robbed that business at gunpoint. No one was hurt in this incident and no arrests have been made. We'll continue to follow both of these cases and keep you updated on air and online when we learn more. All right, Ashley, thank you. Also new tonight, the city of Portland confirms that the downtown Buffalo Wild Wings has closed. The mayor's office tells us they ended the business's lease after it failed to pay rent. The office says it came to this after numerous good faith attempts to find solutions. The franchisee claims they withheld rent payments until the city properly addressed security concerns. The mayor's office says this was a necessary step and is hopeful about finding another business to take that space in the future. Well, turning now to weather, it was a chilly and wet day across the Portland area today. Joe Ranieri joining us. Sunday looking any better than today, Joe? Just a little bit. Now, earlier during the 5 o'clock, he called uh, today nasty. I'd say the second half of Saturday was more nastier out there. We're looking at some scattered showers, and some of those showers were heavy at times. Now, when we chatted... Uh, Around 5 o'clock, we saw under a tenth of an inch of rain. Now we've more than doubled that in a few locations. Here's a live look now from downtown Portland from the bricks there. They're all damp with a temperature of 47 degrees, and those showers are going to continue the rest of tonight and into early tomorrow morning. Here's a look at some of the rainfall amounts. Uh, this has basically been falling since about 5, 6 o'clock tonight. Two tenths of an inch of rain over in Hillsborough, about the same at the Portland International Airport, just over a tenth of an inch over in Scappoose. And heading into tomorrow, we'll see uh, just about the same amount amounts in a few locations, but for the most part, we'll see those uh, showers move in throughout the morning hours, a little bit drier late morning, early part of the afternoon before another round of showers moves through. So scattered showers continue into tomorrow, staying cool uh, for the next couple of days with daytime highs right around the uh, low to mid 50s, but things will start to warm up a little bit heading into the middle part of next week. I'll talk more about that in detail in just a few minutes. All right, Joe, thank you. A Tualatin man is dead after falling about 20 feet and landing on rocks near the shore of the Columbia River. It happened Wednesday in Skamania County at a home near Prindle.
first responders arrived to find the body of Francisco Duran. They say he died from injuries sustained in the fall and get, uh, investigators do not believe any kind of criminal activity took place. Asian groups from around the community came together today to raise awareness of anti-Asian crimes. They gathered just weeks after a man in his 70s was brutally attacked near Portland's waterfront. Even more disturbing, the attacker is still at large. On the banks of the Willamette River, dozens gather. Savagely attacked by a random stranger. Bright orange signs read, say no to anti-Asian violence. It's a public park and we should feel safe in this area no matter we are on bike or walking or fishing. Just three weeks ago, a 73-year-old man was attacked at Waterfront Park while he was fishing. His arm broken, his eye swollen shut. My dad and I um, don't feel safe. His daughter says police haven't found the man who beat him. Because whoever did this crime is still out there. How can we feel safe? And Liang is worried her dad was attacked because he is Asian. If this attack um, has, uh, is based on racial bias, so it's, well, that will be especially concerned to us. Portland police are still investigating, but they say at this time there's no evidence to suggest it was a biased crime. And we take those very seriously. Sergeant Matt Jacobson says about a dozen incidents of crimes targeting Asians took place in 2023. Even one incident, uh, one event can have long lasting and rippling effects within a, within a community. Liang hopes evidence found at the scene will lead to the suspect's arrest. The only evidence we got is that Blue Beanie and the detective already sent to the lab for DNA test. So hopefully we are able, will be able to identify this person and uh, put him away. Suicide is now the second leading cause of death for college athletes. That's from a new study published by the University of Washington. Researchers say from 2002 to 2022, the rate of suicide among athletes has doubled. On average, the athletes who died were 20 years old. It's the reason why the parents of Reese Widman are sharing his story. His parents say he had been struggling with depression for some time, but they saw no warning signs before he took his own life last January. They say Reese didn't want to feel like a burden by reaching out for help. In one of his uh, quotes in uh, one of his letters was, uh, you know, do what I couldn't do and get help. He apologized in the note. He hid it so well. I think that there's just a lot of additional pressures that they may be facing. Um, you know, so much of their identity as an athlete is is graded on performance. While Reese wasn't a college student just yet, he did commit to play baseball at Pierce College. His parents have now started a foundation in his name, as well as multiple scholarships and a baseball tournament, all to raise awareness for mental health and suicide prevention. Well, if you or someone you know is in crisis, there is help available. Call 988 for the 24-hour suicide and crisis lifeline. Oregon City Police say the suspect who damaged a historic elevator is now in custody. They've identified him as 22-year-old Evan Betancourt, and was, he was booked in the Clackamas County Jail for criminal mischief. Betancourt was caught on camera just before midnight Friday night, kicking the city's municipal elevator and breaking it. This is one of only four municipal elevators in the world that still operates. And a reminder for transit riders, a stretch of the Max Blue Line will be closed starting tomorrow. The disruption will affect five stations between East 172nd Avenue and Civic Drive in Gresham. Shuttle buses will run every 15 minutes. This is so TriMet can make improvements to an old rail crossing in the area. The disruption will last through next Saturday, April the 13th.